Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. My name is Aubrey Johnson. I'm a product marketing manager here at HashiCorp. I just wanted to say thanks for joining today's live stream event. Um, so today we're very excited to walk through some of the new features and functions released with Vault 1.7. Um, this includes autopilot features for integrated storage, tokenization with Transform, key management secrets engine, and performance and reliability improvements across the project. Joining me today is Justin Weisig, Senior Product Marketing Manager for Vault. And during our session today, we'll jump into our latest product features and then follow that by a question and answer session. The webinar is being recorded, um, and the recording will be made available after post-processing, -pro post usually within two days. And then since we're sharing via a media player, you're able to expand to full screen by clicking the expand arrow button on the top banner. And then lastly, we do have a um, question and answer box, so please um, put your questions in there and then we'll answer them during the Q&A section. With that, let's jump in and I will turn it over to Justin. Awesome, great, thanks very much, Aubrey. Well, good morning and good afternoon for whenever you're watching this, um, and thanks for tuning in. So before we dive in, uh, my name is Justin, and I'm on the technical marketing team for Vault. Uh, we also look after HCB Vault and Boundary. So um, what we're gonna do today is walk through Vault 1.7 and just sort of chat about the latest features. Here's a high level agenda of what I wanted to chat about. Um, there was a bunch of cool things that went into this release. And so um, what we'll do is we'll sort of look at uh, each feature, sort of look at what the problem is, um, what the solution is, and then sort of how it works and maybe what a workflow looks like. Um, so before I actually dive into the features, um, I realize most of the folks on the call probably already know what Vault does, but I just wanted to spend um, just a couple minutes chatting about Vault at a high level, just in case you're new, sort of, uh, to set the scene for uh, what's to come next. So in case you're totally new to Vault, Vault is a, it's sort of a central service that you'll put on your network within your, um, typically within your compute environment, you know, whether that's on, on, you know, in your own data centers or in the cloud, or it might span both those sort of scenarios and, uh, you know, sync up. Um, so Vault's a central place where you can put all your secrets. These are things like, um, you know, uh, usernames and passwords, API keys, um, you know, uh, you know, TLS certificates or something like that. Say, for example, um, you know, a typical use case would be, hey, I have a, a web app, um, and in that web app, there's multiple secrets. Even a, a very simple web app, you know, when I'm connecting to the web app, I'm going to have uh, TLS certificates for encryption. I'm going to have usernames and logins. Um, you know, if you're doing any sort of, um, um, you know, a store or payment processing or anything like that, you're going to have, um, uh, you're going to be dealing with PII data. Um, as well as, um, say, you're connecting out to external services, say, like uh, payment processing, you know, maybe you have API keys or you're sending emails, maybe you have API keys for that. So even a very simple web app is going to have a whole whole bunch of secrets, right? Um, and then you know, when you want to deploy into that environment, you're going to have some sort of CI CD pipeline and you're going to have a bunch of secrets there as well, uh, you know, database secrets. So that's a very simple example, but when you sort of expand that to, hey, I'm a, uh, I'm a big bank or I'm a, a startup that's running, you know, hundreds or thousands of these apps, all of a sudden you can sort of see the sort of secrets explosion that happens. And uh, um, oftentimes, uh, folks are looking for sort of a, a standard workflow they can use for interacting with this secret data. Um, you know, you can have a, a sort of a standard workflow that can be shared across a whole bunch of teams. And then, you know, it's uh, audited and logged and you have a uh, sort of tight control about how people interact with those secrets. So that's sort of the elevator pitch for um, Vault. One of the guiding principles for Vault is, you know, we want it to be API driven. So, um, Typically, you know, how folks interact with uh, Vault is it's, you know, machines wanting passwords to other machines. So, hey, I'm a web app. I need a password to a database. Um, I'm going to ask Vault for it and Vault will return it. So that's sort of the uh, typical path there. Um, there's also a, a rich ecosystem of integrations. So uh, once you have this uh, Vault sitting on your network, um, uh, all of a sudden, you can do a whole bunch of cool things with it. It's sort of like a Swiss Army knife, um, you know, for handling secret data. 
we can, um, you know, there, we have something called the transit secret engine, which allows you to pass information over to Vault and it can encrypt it. Uh, Vault can reach out to, you know, database engines or, or databases uh, via, via database engines and, um, you know, uh, create credentials or ro rotate credentials. Vault can also reach out to uh, cloud providers and generate, um, you know, static or dynamic credentials. So there's a, uh, it doesn't really matter the workflow that you're probably using at your company. Vault probably has the capability to integrate with it. So uh, that's sort of my uh, Vault 101 uh, um, sort of section there. And then I'm just going to start diving into the features of, that uh, went into Vault 1.7. So, um, so we have all these secrets that are sitting in Vault now, right? Um, so where where does where do those secrets actually live? You know, uh, we need Vault needs to store them somewhere. Traditionally, we use console as a uh, backend, uh, you know, storage system. However, um, we actually integrated uh, storage right into Vault. So when you're running Vault. Uh, you know, in a highly available environment, typically it's not going to just be one vault instance. It's going to be multiple vault instances. You know, I have three um, sort of vault instances here. And vault can be configured to run in a highly available configuration so that, um, you know, if you ask vault, hey, give me a secret, but this node is actually down, um, you know, we can fail over to another node within the cluster and vault will still be highly available and answer all those queries. Uh, maybe I should sort of add a little antidote here. Um, so say, for example, you're a, a, a big bank or something like that, and you're running a web app, and it's asking Vault for a secret that connects to, say, a database. We call that sort of request the critical path. If um, you know the web app isn't able to fetch that secret from Vault, then your application is effectively down because it can't access the data store. So one of the sort of core underlying principles of Vault is that we want to have, you know, Vault be run in a highly available way, um, as well as support disaster recovery scenarios. So integrated storage is sort of a key component of that in that, um, you know, storage is actually handled by the Vault cluster. So we're not relying on, a, you know, a third party to sort of provision that storage for us. However, when you're doing that, um, there's sort of a lot of uh, back-end uh, sort of maintenance that uh, maintenance, ta maintenance tasks that you need to be on top of. So for example, you know, you, you want to make sure that, um, you know, the cluster is monitored. Um, if, if there is some sort of, uh, uh, say, instance failure or something like that, that, um, you know, it's recognized and, uh, you know, we boot up a new node and the older node is cleaned up. So we added this feature called Autopilot, which is taken from uh, our console product and we put that into Vault, and it handles a lot of this, um, you know, monitoring server stabilization. So, say we no say we add a new node into the Vault cluster, you know, it'll monitor the node for a period of time before it gives it um, the capability to uh, be a leader. Also, you know, if we detect a, a node has failed, you know, we'll we'll clean that up automatically. So, Autopilot is sort of a set of features that um, will automatically make sure your cluster is in a healthy state. I should also mention that um, we'll send out all these slides uh, after, so you'll have all the documentation and uh, as well as the learn guides. All right, so I think that's integrated storage. Let's move on to the next one. So tokenization with Transform is um, specifically targeted at uh, use cases where you know you're running some sort of application and you're collecting PII data. These, this could be, you know, passport numbers, uh, social insurance numbers, credit card data. Um, so we're we're targeting sort of that, uh, you know, very secret PII data that uh, often you're required by some sort of regulation to, um, you know, make sure it's safe. Uh, the Transform engine supports a few different use cases. So uh, in a few releases ago, we released it um, with sort of the use cases of FPE or format preserving encryption in mind. What this means is say you have like a database table and in there you have uh, credit card numbers, you know, so it's going to be four digits, a dash, four digits, uh, like the image uh, presents here. Um, you know, you can pass it to Vault. Vault will um, 
look at that string, we'll encrypt it, and we'll give you back something that looks uh, like a credit card number. We support a few different use cases. One is, um, you know, using FPE, we'll, we'll give you back something that looks like a credit card number. However, that's uh, reversible with encryption. So you can pass that encoded string back to Vault, we'll decrypt it and send you the real key. Um, with this release, we're adding something called uh, tokenization, which is true tokenization. When you pass a credit card number to Vault, um, we'll give you back uh, a generated token. This isn't reversible through encryption. So the use case here is, um, you know, say you're uh, uh, maybe a hotel or something like that. You're collecting, uh, you know, flight numbers, passport numbers, uh, a whole bunch of uh, sort of metadata about your customers, you know, uh, where they live, um, all their credit card details. So you're amassing uh, a huge amount of PII data. However, with um, credit card data, you probably don't, by regulation, you're probably not allowed to store the uh, actual credit card number, even if it's encrypted. So you want to have a, you want to generate a token that isn't directly, can't be brute forced or unencrypted that'll give you their credit card number. You know, there has to be some sort of a lookup that happens and it's a, a token that represents that credit card number. Then you can save that in your database. And then, um, you know, even if someone dumps your database, they can't, uh, you know, brute force or unencrypt the, the credit card numbers. This is a pretty cool feature. Um, uh, there's, uh, you know, I could probably talk the entire webinar just about this. So, you know, there's uh, documentation and learn guides that you can go through. Um, with Vault 1.7, we extended the enterprise license to six hours. So, you know, you can go download the enterprise binary and you can go through these learn guides and documentation and uh, sort of play around with the feature. All right, so the next one I wanted to chat about is, um, the DB username uh, customization. Maybe when I probably just step back for a second and explain, uh, you know, what this is. So uh, Vault can interact with a database. Uh, say, for example, you're running MySQL or Postgres or something like that. You can have Vault connect to those databases and manage the user credentials on the on those databases. So, say for example, you have a, a web app and you want to generate a, a dynamic uh, user. So, you know, once a month you want to say rotate the credential that the web app is using, you know, just in case somehow the uh, credential gets exposed out into the public. You know, it's not a, um, you know, a highly privileged account that sort of lasts forever. Um, you know, obviously you can tighten the windows down, but that's sort of the general workflow. Another workflow might be that, hey, someone needs to go and, um, do some sort of maintenance uh, on the database, we need to generate, um, you know, a username and password that's valid for, you know, a few hours while they do their work. So that's sort of a high level workflow. However, um, you know, before we introduced this feature, we were just generating a random username and a random password. So you might get some string that's not, um, you know, if you go and look at the, the users in the database, it's not gonna be like a parent, um, you know, what username, uh, like who generated this credential or sort of how it maps back to the, the person that requested it. So what we've, what we've done is we've added a username customization feature here. So you can actually tell Vault, here's the string uh, that I want to, you know, that I want the username to follow. So, you know, you can add a prefix in here that you can say, hey, here's my web app. I wanna add, um, you know, a random 10 digit, 10 digit string I want to say the role name, and then I want to give it a timestamp. Uh, these are obviously customizable. We're using the Golang template language here, so it's uh, very flexible. And then here's some sort of sample outputs. You know, I have my web app. I have the uh, random data here. I have the role that's uh, generating these, and then I have a Unix timestamp. So this is, you know, if I go into the database and I look at the usernames, now I have that sort of visual mapping back to, hey, who's actually requesting this? You know, this might be a web app or you could have, um, you know, hey, the, uh, um, you know, a sysadmin XYZ requested this uh, so they can come in and do maintenance. This is just sort of a, you know, a nice to have feature. Right now we're supporting um, Postgres, MS SQL, MySQL, Mongo, Cassandra, Oracle, Coachbase and OpenLDAP. Um, so there's quite a few. Uh, 
this was sort of a requested feature, so we're happy to add that in there. Um, the next feature that I wanted to chat about is, um, so say you're uh, using Kubernetes and you want to inject secrets into, you know, a, a running pod that's, uh, you know, going to be consumed by your application. Say, for example, um, you know, hey, I'm running a web app and I want to connect to a database. You can use um, Fault's sidecar injection feature to say, hey, I want to inject a username and password into this pod so that my you know, application can pick it up and then connect over to my database. So we added this persistent uh, cast feature because there was a, um, a problem where, say for example, hey, I want to use dynamic credentials. Um, I'm, I'm going to go into a bit of technical de de detail here just to sort of explain the scenario of why we added this feature. So you can launch your pod. It's going to uh, initially fetch the secret by, call, by calling an init container before your application starts. So, hey, I'm going to fetch a secret. Then your application is actually going to start, start up, and then we're going to do something called sidecar injection, which will actually fetch another dynamic credential. So you could run into a problem where, you know, if you're using an init and sidecar container, you could actually generate two credentials within that uh, pod. And you could run into an issue if you're using like a short TTL or something like that, that the, the credential could actually expire on you. So what we wanted to do was, um, you know, figure out a way to only request one credential versus two, you know, if you generate it by the init and sidecar container. So we introduced this feature called a agent persistent cache. Uh, I actually have a diagram here that explains it. So, um, you know, this is the init container here, and then this is the sidecar container. So when an uh, init container will actually go out, it'll request the credential, and then it'll create a, a cache um, using a shared memory volume with your actual um, you know, Kubernetes pod. So when your application boots up, instead of um, you know, going out and fetching a new credential, it'll hit the cache and say, oh, we actually already have a credential for that, and then it'll just use that one. So we sort of fixed this problem of, um, you know, uh, using that double credential, and now by way of this uh, persistent cache. We've also added another feature um, in, uh, in the Kubernetes ecosystem here around the uh, CSI plugin. So we've uh, done quite a bit of work there. Um, using the CSI plugin, this is another way of you know, getting credentials uh, injected into your Kubernetes pod. Uh, it's, it uses a sort of a more Kubernetes native way of doing it. Um, you know, using uh, sidecar injection, basically each each application that you want to, uh, you know, inject a secret into a Kubernetes pod is going to have this sidecar um, vault agent sitting there. However, there's a, a, quite a few folks that want to use the CSI plugin that sort of has a single um, password manager sitting on each uh, worker node that will inject secrets. So doesn't really matter the spectrum of um, you know your workflow when you're working on Kubernetes. You know you could directly interact with Vault via the API. You could use this init and sidecar injection feature, or you can use the uh, CSI plugin. If you're interested in any of these use cases, I definitely recommend checking out the blog. In that um, we have all the sort of um, you know documentation and uh, learn guides and all that stuff in there. Um, so that's um, the Kubernetes and CSI feature. So what I think we'll do is we'll chat about, um, you know, uh, the open LDAP and how you can generate dynamic AD credentials. So um, similar to how you can uh, use Vault to interact with a database to generate dynamic credentials, say, for example, you know, a sysadmin needs to go in there and do some maintenance work or something like that, they can generate a credential. We've added the same capability to... Um, you know, Active Directory and LDAP because Active Directory uses a subset of LDAP, so it works across both. So, sort of the problem is, is hey, you know, I'm I'm using AD, and um, you know, maybe I'm running an education company, and you know, every week I have a hundred new students that come in for a few days. I need to generate, um, you know, a whole whole bunch of credentials, and they only need to last a, a brief window of time. So, what you can do is you can use Vault to generate those credentials. So you'll Configure Vault to connect to your Active Directory. You'll set up a, a role that says, 
hey, I want to generate this type of credential for this time period. And then you can go and request uh, those credentials from Vault. Vault will, behind the scenes, Vault will go and connect with LDAP, generate those credentials, and then it'll make sure that it cleans up those credentials once the TTL expires. This is a really cool feature. And, uh, you know, I think it'll solve a bunch of manual work that uh, folks have to go through. It doesn't just apply to, um, you know, um, uh, say I'm running an education company or something like that. I have a bunch of students. It also applies to, hey, maybe I have an automated maintenance job that needs a credential for, uh, you know, a brief brief amount of time. Your, your script can go fetch your credential from Vault. Um, and then, you know, Vault behind the scenes will go and clean that up. So super cool feature. Um, that's another uh, request. So we're happy to uh, complete that one. We've added a new uh, secrets engine to 1.7. Um, this is around Terraform Cloud. So uh, this is the hosted version of Terraform. Uh, so what happens is, um, you know, typically how folks interact with Terraform Cloud is, uh, you know, they want to uh, do it through the API. You know, maybe you have a CI CD pipeline that spins up some infrastructure or something like that and then uh, tears it down once, you're, once the pipeline is complete. Um, but how do you manage credentials in that type of environment? Uh, before we had the secret engine, these were typically long lived tokens that you'd, uh, or API keys that you'd need to interact with. With this new uh, Terraform secret engine, you can generate that, um, your own credentials. So you enable the secrets engine, you configure it to talk to Terraform Cloud using your um, API key, and then you can go and generate those um, additional sort of credentials for you know, your CI CD pipeline and stuff like that. Um, there's also the capability to rotate those credentials and uh, revoke the credentials. Again, there's uh, documentation and learn guides. If you just Google um, you know, Vault 1.7 blog, you'll, you'll find all the information there and all the learn guides and documentation, but We'll also send out the slides here too. All right, the next feature I wanted to chat about is called the Key Management Secret Engine. Um, so what's the sort of problem here? So imagine you're a, a, a large um, enterprise and hey, you know, I'm using uh, a cloud provider, you know, maybe AWS or Azure, and you know, I don't necessarily want to rely on the cloud provider's encryption keys. Typically this is called like bring your own key. Um, Typically, what a large enterprise will do is they'll upload their, um, you know, uh, you know, encryption keys to the cloud provider, and then they can, you know, encrypt their data, you know, at rest, um, or, you know, when they're transferring, uh, you know, data from, you know, their data centers over to the cloud, they know, hey, they sort of maintain that, um, uh, you know, custody chain. However, you know, it can be complicated, especially if you have a, a lot of different keys. Uh, you know, sort of to maintain the life cycle of uh, those keys in a cloud provider. So we've added something into Vault, which is now uh, generally available for um, Azure, and we've added beta access for uh, AWS. This feature allows you to main manage the sort of life cycle op operations of these keys, you know, around uh, creating, reading, updating, or rotating those keys. Vault will actually hang on to the keys. So even if you revoke the key from the cloud provider, you know, Vault still has the key and you can uh, redeploy it there. Um, so here's the documentation as well as the learn guides. Again, you know, um, you can just Google all this stuff pretty easily if you type in, uh, you know, key management secret engine Vault. The final uh, thing that I wanted to chat about here is we've also added, um, you know, a Snowflake secret engine. So if you're interacting with uh, Snowflake, you know, um, and you want to, again, generate dynamic credentials, uh, we've added this new secret engine, which allows you to do that. So it's pretty cool. I think you're sort of seeing a theme here around, you know, dynamic credentials across a whole, a whole bunch of these uh, updates. So that's pretty cool. Um, one thing I wanted to chat about uh, that also happened that's sort of tied to the 1.7 release is um, we've launched something called HCP Vault. This is a managed offering of Vault. Um, you can actually consume Vault in three different ways. So there's the open source project, which is um, you know totally free. You can just go download the binary and away you go. Um, it was very popular. I think last year it was something like 16 million downloads. So there's a, a huge amount of uh, uh, folks out there that are using that. 
And then we have another version, which is, um, you know, the enterprise version, which has a sort of advanced capability around uh, HA and DR. So, hey, I need a highly available cluster. I, you know, maybe I need a disaster recovery that, it, you know, Vault will replicate to multiple data centers or something like that. Uh, so that's the second way you can run Vault. Um, and then there's a third way um, now that uh, we have HTTP Vault, which is around a HashiCorp will actually manage a Vault instance for you. So you can sort of see, um, you know, on the uh, left-hand side here, you know, this is customer managed. You know, we have uh, Terraform, Vault, Console, and Nomad. Typically, what you're going to see is you're going to see, um, you know, we're offering managed services for all this stuff. So we already have Terraform Cloud. We now have HCP Vault. We have HCP Console. And then you can see uh, Nomad there. That's, uh, um, I guess, coming. <laughs> so um, what I wanted to do was actually give you a preview of uh, HCP Vault, just in case you uh, haven't seen it. Um, this is a, a paid thing that you, um, you know, you can just sign up over the portal. Um, you know, uh, when you actually sign up, it's free. You'll get, uh, I think it's fifty dollars in credits, which allows you to run Vault for a couple months just to sort of play around with it. And then you can run a, a developer instance, which is a single node uh, Vault instance. You know, for around three cents an hour. So you can imagine with fifty bucks, um, three cents an hour goes a long ways. Um, so you can just click a button. Uh, a vault cluster will spin up. I'll actually, I'll show you this in a second. And then you can um, sort of go through and uh, uh, play around with vault. However, there's uh, a bunch of folks that actually want to, um, you know, they're really, they really like vault and they don't necessarily want to, um, you know, manage the manage it themselves. I think I mentioned earlier, you know, vault is typically in the critical path for a lot of applications. Hey, I'm a web app. I need a database credential to do some work. You know, if I don't get that credential, um, you know, typically your app is down. What this means is that, you know, if you're running Vault yourself, typically you're going to have to have, um, you know, teams that are well versed in, you know, sort of how to operate Vault. If there's an issue with it, you know, how to troubleshoot it and remediate it. Also, you know, pager, you know, that typically involves pagers. Hey, I'm going to get paged in the middle of the night, that type of stuff. So we've had a lot of our existing customers ask for, hey, you know, it'd be great if you offered a managed version of this. So that's um, sort of the roots of where HTTP Vault comes from. So we have the um, sort of development version. This is a single node meant for non-prod. And then we have uh, a standard version. This is a three node highly available cluster, um, which you can spin up. You know, it's a, around $1.50 an hour. Uh, there's multiple sort of tiers in there, as well as we offer um, the ability of around uh, annual contract. So Hey, say I'm, uh, you know, I really like running uh, the managed instance of Vault. I know I'm going to do it for, you know, a period of time. Um, this is where you can sort of reach out to sales and they'll work with you. Typically, this involves uh, discounts. Cool. So with that, I, I'm going to jump out of the presentation, and then I thought I'd just quickly show you what uh, HTTP Vault looks like. So if you want to play around with this, you can just go to, you know, cloud hashicorp.com. You'll come in here. There's a getting started link. Um, also, you know, if you want to play around with console or if you want to play around with vault, you just click this and it will take you over to our uh, portal. Maybe what I'll, I'll just chat about sort of the portal in general for a second. So um, you can sign up, you know, with your individual email or we have an integration with GitHub. You just select that and you'll be popped in here. Each new account, you know, as I mentioned, gets 50 bucks of uh, credits. So you can sort of play around with uh, Vault for, you know, at least a couple months, like in, in terms of the development instance, uh, to get sort of familiar with it. Right now we're running on AWS. And, you know, in a production environment, uh, typically what you're going to do is you're going to peer with your AWS VPC, and then you will maintain sort of a secure private connection, um, you know, between the uh, HCP um, you know, virtual network and your AWS VPC. So, you know, all the traffic is secured there. So if I, I wanted to get started with Vault, you know, I just click, uh, you know, deploy Vault. I'll be uh, sort of uh, popped over into, uh, you know, a cluster create page here. I can, uh, you know, set up the name. I'll, I'll be asked, uh, hey, what, uh, you know, network do you want to put this in? 
right now we support um, uh, five different uh, AWS regions, you know, uh, US West, US East, and then three in Europe. Uh, so beforehand, you'll create this little virtual network that says, hey, you know, um, all my AWS infrastructure sits in, um, you know, Ireland. I want to create a virtual network there. So when we actually go and create this cluster, we'll pop we'll pop that cluster into that virtual network for you. Uh, you'll select the tier. So right now I, ha I have um, you know, a development cluster selected. This is a single node non-prod, gives you the cluster size. You know, say, hey, I played around with the development tier for a while, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I, you know, I did my sort of proof of concept. Now I, now I wanna run this uh, for real. You, know, you can select a highly available three node cluster. And then we have sort of three options in here, small, medium, and large. So the only difference here is, um, you know, sort of the CPU and uh, RAM resources that are um, given to each instance. Sort of what I should actually uh, mention here too is, you know, if I were to go cr click create after, after I select this, what we're actually doing is we're spinning up, you know, dedicated instances just for you. This isn't shared infrastructure. It's not, um, you know, multi-tenant. We're spinning up dedicated instances uh, just for you and then bootstrapping the cluster. So say I select a, hey, I have a, a medium cluster. I want to click that. We we have a couple different options on how you can actually interact with this. So, you know, say say I go up here, I, I clear, create a brand new account. You know, I just want a developer instance. Um, you know, if I want to interact with this, asking folks to go, hey, uh, go through an AWS VPC can be a little bit complicated, especially, um, you know, if you just want to play around with this, you know, you somehow need to connect into AWS, proxy your traffic over the, uh, you know, a peer VPC into Vault. So what we've done is we added this little toggle switch. We'll actually um, uh, create a, a public IP address for this Vault instance. We don't recommend this for production, but it's, you know, it's fantastic if you just want to sort of play around with Vault. Um, I'm not going to cr click create here because it does take about uh, 10 minutes just because we're actually spinning up the uh, infrastructure behind the scenes. But what I have here is I've already created a uh, vault cluster. So I'll just uh, show you that. So, um, you know, in this uh, vault cluster, I, you know, you'll be given a, a private address. This is the address that you'd connect over, you know, the AWS VPC. But we also have this public address here because I asked for a public address when I created this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this one. I'm going to paste that in here. Um, that's what uh, I've already logged in before. So I'm going to log out. Then I'm going to go back to my cluster. I'm going to generate a token. This basically says, um, hey, you're generating a token. I'm going to copy this token. And then I can go and log into uh, Vault. So what's super cool about this is... Um, you know, you can just click a button in HTTP Vault, Vault. You know, our managed Vault offering. We'll spin up, but we'll spin up a Vault cluster for you. Manage sort of all the lifecycle events behind the scenes. You know, we're monitoring it. Supports involved. SRE. We have a global SRE team that's uh, watching this. Um, so, from the customer perspective, though, all you do is click a button, you get a Vault instance, and you can play around with it. It's uh, fantastic, and it uh, really will remove sort of uh, the operational overhead of running Vault in production. Um, you know, this is a full-fledged uh, Vault instance. You know, I can go and create, the, you know, new secret engine, say, hey, for example, I wanted to, um, you know, connect out to GCP or AWS to generate dynamic credentials, or, you know, maybe I uh, want to enable some of those uh, database secrets engines that I talked about before. You know, you, ha you have access to everything here. Um, so that's sort of HTTP Vault in a nutshell. Uh, as Aubrey mentioned at the beginning, you know, if you have any questions about any of this stuff or, you know, the Vault 1.7 release just in general, make sure to um, sort of pop it in the QA thing uh, box there and we'll make sure to get that answered. Um, there's also one other thing I sort of wanted to show you here is around snapshots. So I don't, I haven't created any yet, but um, you know, say for example, you know, I want to do some testing or, hey, I'm about to do some big upgrade and I want to, um, you know, uh, do a backup of my data. All you can do is just create a, uh, a backup. You know, it's just sort of click a button and then uh, this should just take a second to create. And then, you know, 
say for example, uh, you know, I did something destructive in Vault, I can just go and restore right from that uh, backup. We're creating automated backups uh, once a day, but you know, you can come in and do this yourself too. That's about it for the presentation. However, I just wanted to highlight, um, you know, one final thing here. If you haven't uh, checked out learn.hashicorp.com, it's a, you know, a free site you can go to. And we have uh, sort of in-depth, um, you know, step-by-step -step learn guides that you can go through. This ranges from, um, you know, hey, I don't know anything about Vault. How do I, um, you know, set it up? To, um, you know, reference architectures. To, you know, adding your first secret. To, hey, I want to do Kubernetes sidecar injection. You know, super advanced stuff. All, all the way to the sort of the the basic stuff. Um, in here we have, um, you know, you know, getting started guides. Uh, hey, how do I start with HTTP Vault? We also have something in here called, um, you know, Vault 1.7 Highlights. This is, um, you know, learn guides that are specific to, um, you know, the 1.7 release. So say, for example, hey, you know, I'm using integrated storage. I'm about to upgrade to Vault 1.7. Uh, this autopilot feature looks pretty cool. Um, you know, we have a learn guide that will go and walk you through step by step of, you know, getting familiar with all the features and, you know, how it works. And um, it's a great way to sort of kick the tires with, um, you know, the new features. So I think with that, Aubrey, I'm going to go back to the presentation here. Um, uh, let me just present this. Oops, clicked the wrong button there. Um, so I think that's um, it for me. Uh, what I'll do is I'll pass it back to Aubrey. So as Aubrey already mentioned, you know, if you have any questions, uh, you know, make sure to pop them in the uh, Q and A box there. After this, we'll be sending out the recording as well as all the slides. So, you know, if, um, hey, you saw something in there that looks interesting and, you know, you need the links, you know, uh, obviously you can Google that too, um, but uh, we'll provide all the references. So I'll kick it back to you, Aubrey, and then uh, we'll go through some uh, Q&A. Yeah, perfect. Thanks so much, Justin. Um, so thanks to everyone who submitted those great questions. Um, that Q&A box is still open if you have anything. Um, but we'll go ahead and kick it off. So, um, Justin, we have a question here that says, is there a list of published APIs for Vault? Yeah. So, um, actually, let me just, uh, she Corp Vault API. Um, you know, if you just Google that, HashiCorp Vault API, you'll actually go to our the Vault project, uh, um, you know, API page. In here, we have a complete listing of, uh, you know, all the APIs. You can uh, search in here to say, for example, you wanted, uh, hey, how do audit devices work or something? You know, you can just go in there and figure that out. So, um, yeah, super complete, uh, you know, documentation for all that stuff. Awesome, thank you. Um, next question is, will the template that generates tokens for Postgres take into account the maximum length? If so, um, and I make a template that will generate a token for longer, will it let me know? Um, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that, but I know obviously, um, you know, different databases since we support uh, um, you know, quite a few, you know, Postgres, MySQL, MSQL, uh, you know, on, and on and on, that, uh, you know, each of those is probably going to have, um, uh, you know, a different length requirement. I don't know if we'll actually, uh, you know, give you a warning. I think you probably have to test that. Um, uh, I'm hesitant to say, like, I don't want to say yes, because uh, I don't think that uh, capability exists. But uh, my recommendation would just be to test it. Okay, perfect. Um, it looks like we covered all the rest of the questions. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you for everyone um, who attended today. And again, um, we will be available um, in about two business days, and then we'll send an email to everyone who registered um, with the recording link. So thanks so much. Have a great day.